Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to the lecture series. This is lecture two, part one in my new series in the educational and physique enhancement content. Today's video is going to focus on types of diets. Is there a best diet? And we will be diving into the research here my favorite so thank you guys so much for tuning in if you haven't seen the first lecture you gotta go back you have to watch the first one link is in the description box below just click on the link head over to that video um, I got a lot of positive feedback about it so with that being said please enjoy this lecture on different types of diets comparing the paleo and keto diet and be on the lookout for part two as it's gonna be uploaded next in this lecture series. Welcome back to this lecture series. Today's lecture is gonna focus on different types of diets and answering the big question, do all these diets work? So an overview of what I'm gonna be talking about, what makes a diet work, different types of diets, and really diving into the research to answer some really big questions. Paleo diet, keto diet, high carb, low carb, high protein diet, flexible dieting, and answering another question, is there really a best diet? For the purpose of this lecture, I'm gonna be focusing on dieting for losing primarily fat. So pulling this up from my last lecture, what makes a diet work? When the goal is primarily fat loss, the ideal approach would be a calorie deficit. Eating less than what you're burning is going to result in some type of weight loss. Um, now, it is true that this isn't the only option to lose body fat like I talked about last time, but for the purpose of this, I'm going to be focusing on calorie deficit is the approach when your goal is primarily losing body fat. So different types of diets. We have paleo, we have keto, we have low carb, we have whole food diets, and now kind of coming back into the play is flexible dieting and this if it fits your macros type approach. And here we see Sour Patch Kids, chicken, broccoli, a bunch of different foods. Let's take the next step and explore some of the, these types of diets. So the paleo diet. The paleo diet includes nutrient-dense whole foods and encourages participants to steer away from highly processed foods, added sugar, added salt, and unhealthy fats. This is from a source um, that I would say is quite re reliable. It's harvard.edu. Plug this in the Google, found this really good source, giving us the definition of paleo diet. So some internet claims about the paleo diet. Eat like a caveman and shed pounds. You can lose weight without cutting calories. So when we go back to think about this, what makes a diet work? A calorie deficit. So is doing the paleo diet making that irrelevant? Does that not matter anymore because we're eating and following these rules? I don't know. At the end of the day, I think if you're eating in a calorie deficit, you're going to lose weight somehow. So I don't know how you can lose weight without cutting calories or being in a deficit. So that's interesting. And this was the first plug when I typed in on Google, paleo diet, how to and does it work? It came up from WebMD, which is a .com site, which a lot of people turn to for some reliable information. So. If this site is telling you you don't need to be in a calorie deficit to lose weight, I would probably focus on some source evaluation uh, here. So this caveman diet, um, they are saying you what you can have after doing some of my own research, you can have fish, meat, eggs, vegetables, fruit, nuts, seeds, basically healthy, healthy fats and oils. That wasn't really defined what that meant. Um, you can't have processed foods, artificial sweeteners, dairy, butter, no sugar, um, or added sugar. So what this is really doing is it's telling me, the dieter, hey, these, these processed foods are totally off limits. I can't have them. So is that is that really an approach that you can sustain? Um, will you enjoy it? And 
are you going to be able to do paleo diet long term? So, so those are some of the things that you have to think about uh, before choosing to take part in this lifestyle. So moving on to the keto diet, also referred to as a low carb diet or a low carb, high fat diet. So this is a type of low carb, low protein and high fat diet. How does this work? You deprive the body of glucose, which you get from consuming primarily carbohydrates. And, and it is thought of after doing some research that an alternative fuel source called ketones are pr produced from your stored body fat. And I pulled this from healthline.com, which I would not deem a reliable source. And your total carbohydrate intake is less than 50 grams per day. So the idea is that you're forcing the body to function on primarily fat. And it wasn't really made clear whether that is dietary fat or adipose tissue, um, adipocyte fat, AKA the stored stuff on your body. So why is this appealing? Um, the idea of having your body primarily focus on burning fat. Um, I think it's the idea of my body is using fat as fuel, so I must be burning body fat all the time. So what do these keto di dieters do? They avoid carb-based foods like grains, sugars, rice, potatoes, candy, juice, even eliminating a lot of fruits. They do not eat many carbs. As I said earlier, less than 50 grams per day. I find that keto dieters tend to associate foods with being good or bad. Um, and when you really put a focus on, hey, I can only have this group of foods, you definitely see food as good or bad, um, which I don't think is very sustainable for long term. So like, what is going to happen when you go out to eat with your family? Are you going to be like, well, I can't enjoy this meal because I can't have that um, it's just so bad, it doesn't fit into my diet. And this diet claims that you can lose weight without tracking your food intake, due to the diet being so filling. Um, I plugged this from that healthline.com nutrition again. And yeah, it's not the keto diet that's probably working, it's the fact that you're eating in a calorie deficit and if the keto diet works for you and you can sustain that, totally keep doing it, but I don't think it's solely the keto diet alone. I think it's the fact that you are in a total caloric um, energy deficit for the day. And if this is the way that you want to sustain that um, and are able to and enjoy it, then totally go for it. So when I looked up keto diet online, we are saying that we should not have these things. They should be totally eliminated. Unhealthy fats, processed vegetable oils, mayonnaise, no alcohol, no sugar-free diet foods, no beans, all of this stuff they're associating with really bad. And when you think about a lifestyle approach, is associating food with good or bad good for a lifestyle? Now, yes, you could do this diet and be successful with body fat reduction, lose weight, um, yeah, totally, totally okay. But when you think about this as incorporating it into a lifestyle, which is going to lead to long-term sustainability, and the diet is over, is it really ever over though? Are you going back to what you used to be doing before you did these types of diets? Um, and that really leads up a big red flag for me of going, hey, is this sustainable? Can I do this long-term? And is this something that I have to eliminate from my life and then everything else kind of falls apart because I don't know how to eat. So let's think about it this way. Let's compare the paleo and keto diets. Some really big questions here. Um, so what happens when you go out to eat at a family dinner or a restaurant? If you're following paleo, you're following keto diet. Yes, there are some paleo options on the menu. There are some keto options on the menu. But what if you go to a restaurant that doesn't have those options? What are you gonna do? Are you not gonna eat? Are you gonna go off your diet? Um, I find that I find that it is very, very common for people to either avoid going to social situations or to totally blow off their diet because they don't know how to incorporate eating into their lifestyle. They don't know how to or understand that, hey, as long as I'm in a calorie deficit, and hit these certain number of macros, I'm still going to be working towards my physique goal and whether that's fat loss 
Um, that will still happen. So is this the best way to lose fat? Again, think about consistency, sustainability, and the possibility of not ever being able to go to Cheesecake Factory again and getting cheesecake and not feeling like a mistake. Do you have to go to that like that family gathering and go, oh my God, I can't have cake because it is bad for me. Is there really always gonna be that association with good and bad and feeling like you're cheating on something? You tell me. So, and does this work? Um, yeah, I would say the paleo diet and keto diets work as long as you are in a caloric deficit. Um, but the other two big factors are consistency and sustainability. Are you gonna be able to incorporate these into your life on a daily basis and not really have an ending point? Is there really a time where, hey, when the diet is over, do I understand what I need to do to keep the weight off? So what does the research say here about keto diets? So this study was by Moreno et al. And it was a comparison of very low calorie keto diet with a standard low calorie diet in the treatment of obesity. So who are we looking at here? We are looking at obese individuals located in a hospital, which is a pretty controlled environment. We are not looking at lean people trying to get leaner, your common athlete, these people just trying to lose weight to get healthy. How long was this? 12 months long. And there was two different groups, a low calorie diet group at 1400 to 1800 kilocalories per day, and then a very low calorie keto diet group. So six to 800 calories per day. This was taken right from the research article. So this is really comparing a very rapid approach to fat loss, six to 800 calories per day with this very low carb keto diet group versus a low calorie dieting group, 800 to 1500 calories per day. Um, which is 20% of their target weight loss. And the very low calorie keto diet group was aiming at such a fast rate of um, weight loss. So for these people, these people are extremely overweight, extremely obese. Um, and when they're eating six to 800 calories per day, that is a very rigid approach, especially for somebody who is extremely overweight, um, probably probably has some connection to food, this can be really, really difficult for them. Um, so the active stage was this six to 800 calorie range and then the dietary re-education. So after the diet was over, they slowly started adding food back into these people's diets um, over a period of time and eventually getting into a maintenance phase of eating a normal amount of calories after the diet was over. So this is a result graph comparing the two different groups on total fat body mass loss and lean body mass loss over the course of these two diets. So losing body mass could be body fat, and I'm not sure if they equated for total body water here, and they were looking at lean body mass, which is muscle mass. So let's look at the very low calorie keto diet group. So here we see the squares and over the course of the 12 month period, they were holding on to their lean mass at a pretty good, pretty good rate. And it looks like they even gained a little bit of lean mass um, over time long term. And looking at their fat body mass that they lost over the course of the 12 months, it looks like they were losing fat at a very, very rapid rate in the beginning, and that kind of leveled off to a more uh, maintenance type phase or continuing to lose weight at a decent speed. And when we look at the low calorie diet group here with the triangles, they were able to maintain their lean body mass over the course of the diet. And then when we look at the fat body mass of the low calorie diet group, we see that they did lose fat kind of at a more steady rate over time, but they didn't lose as much weight over time. So this is taken right from the, I believe, discussion or conclusion part of this paper. So the main finding of this work is when comparing a low calorie diet with a very low calorie, um, very low carbohydrate keto, ketogenic diet, they're saying that the, the keto diet was more effective in losing body weight loss of weight was primarily body fat. And when you think about this, you can think, hey, well, why was this happening? They were in a much 
larger calorie deficit over the course of those 12 months. So during that stage one phase, they were eating six to 800 calories compared to a group that was eating eight to 1500 calories. So there is a very big difference in total caloric intake over a period of time. So it makes sense that they are losing more weight over time. So I think comparing the two diets in this way and not equating for total caloric intake is kind of misleading because we're, we're kind of putting this keto diet on a pedestal and saying, hey, keto diet group lost this weight and they retained lean mass compared to a group who really wasn't in that much of a deficit. So is the keto diet better than other diets? So this is in ISSN position stand on diets and body composition. And this is a review article, which basically takes a bunch of research articles, compiles them into one paper, and draws conclusions from all of the conclusions of the other papers. So is the keto diet better? Based on this review, the conclusions that I gathered were in more controlled dieting interventions that had equal total energy and protein intake, the keto diet versus non-keto diet groups, there was really no significant fat loss advantage in being in a keto diet. What that means is just because you're doing keto compared to somebody doing, let's say, paleo or flexible dieting, that doesn't make your diet better. Um, it, you guys are both going to lose weight. There really is no one better diet. As long as you are in a calorie deficit, you can sustain it, you enjoy it, you're going to lose weight, and that's really the goal of a fat loss phase, right? So if the diet places an individual in a calorie deficit over time, they will lose body weight. I didn't say body fat, but they will lose some type of body weight. Um, body weight can be looked at as lean body mass, body fat, or a combination of both. And lean body mass is the muscle that we've worked so hard to build and retain that we don't want to put ourselves in a position of a diet where we're going to uh, lose that uh, muscle. So thank you guys so much for tuning into this lecture. If you like this kind of content, you want to watch part two of this lecture, please subscribe. You don't want to miss the upload. Now I know my channel's just getting started, so super appreciate the feedback. Love all of that positive energy. Keep rolling in those questions. I want to help you guys out. That is why I am doing this. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. I hope you guys enjoyed part one of this lecture, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Uh -huh.